Hi and welcome to one of ARM's AI Tech Talks, bringing you the latest in AI trends, technologies and best practices from ARM and our ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming talks. And don't forget to view the playlist too in the link above. I hope you enjoy this Tech Talk. Welcome. Welcome to Arm AI Virtual Tech Talks. Today we're going to be uh, learning about how to run machine learning on ARM's Ethos U55 NPU. That's some of the newest IP coming out of ARM and it's actually, you know, it exists in the world now. So we're all very excited about it. Um, and with us today is George. George, can you hit the next slide, please? Uh, tweet us. Oh, sorry. Yep. Tweet us at ARM Software Devs, uh, hashtag AIVTT. Uh, Definitely check out our ARM Software Developer YouTube channel and sign up for our next AI virtual tech talk at developer.arm.com slash tech talks. Uh, our upcoming tech talk schedule today is obviously getting started with running machine learning on ARM Ethos U55. In two weeks, we'll have a hand-on workshop covering the same material. Um, and that'll be hosted by, I think I'm hosting that one. Um, and then later, November 30th, we're going to have Getting Started with Armin N on Android in just five minutes. And then December 14th is going to be how to improve PyTorch app performance with Android and an API support. Um, and introducing, I'd like to thank our presenter, George Gekoff. Um, he's a software engineer in ARM's machine learning team. He develops machine learning applications on ARM Silicon, and he was previously part of ARM's a IOT team. So with nothing else to say, George, take it away. And uh, we're happy to learn from you. Yeah, thank you very much, Carl. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Um, I'd like to start with a question, really. Does anybody enjoy their embedded machine learning software running slowly? In this talk, I'll show you how we fix that problem. Embedded machine learning applications can be really very demanding in terms of compute power. The heart of running an ML model comes down to performing millions of matrix, matrix multiplications on a microcontroller. And you can run those networks on existing silicon. But if you really want the best ML performance in terms of inference time and performance per watt, you really have to use a, pro a processor that was designed from the ground up for machine learning. So in today's talk, I'm going to be speaking about what is the ARM's ETOS U55 micro NPU. I will talk about the software stack that we use in order to program this new product. I'm going to explain you how you can optimize a neural network so that it is targeted for the ETOS U55. And we're going to finish off with a, with a demo, a small, a small um, hands-on part. But first off, what is the ARM's ETOS U55 NPU? The ETOS U55 is a machine learning processor, which is called MicroNPU. It is specifically designed to accelerate machine learning inference in embedded devices. The performance uplift delivered by the ETOS U55 dealing with neural networks is really, out, really astonishing, outstanding. So if you want to run a neural network today, the best ARM hardware that is currently available on the market and you can purchase is the Cortex-M7. And if we compare the performance of a Cortex-M7 system versus a system which is composed of ETOS U55 and Cortex-M55, we observe over 50x improvement in inference time. And this improvement in inference time comes at a fraction of the power consumption of, of the Cortex-M7. So what can you do about all of that today? Can you write a software application for the ETOS U55 and test the performance on the micro NPU? The answer is yes, you can. And that is the very reason why I'm speaking to you today and what I'm going to actually show, show you how to do. The ETOS U55 is a new product which delivers impressive performance. And the cool thing is that you don't even have to have development board lying on your desk in order to start using it. The way to run an application without a physical board is to be using what we call a fixed virtual platform or FVP. We are using the acronym FVP quite often and standing for fixed virtual platform. The fixed virtual platform is a digital twin of a development board, which is loaded with ETOS U55 uh, micro NPU and a Cortex-M55 CPU. 
So in fact, what it has is that it has a it has a software model of those two pieces of, um, of those two processors, and this software model behaves exactly like real silicon, and this allows you to run and test your application. Um, we're going to be using the Corestone 300 reference design or the SEC 300 subsystem part from the Corestone 300 to be, to be exact. Um, and um, it is important to, to know that a product like the E2C55 comes in many different, um, comes in many different configurations. You know, with, with the great power that it delivers also means that it is, this is highly customizable product. Um, and one of the important parameters is the number of Mac units. So Mac is standing for um, multiply accumulate. And the number of Macs that uh, U55, E2C55 is having indicates you the number of concurrent multiplications and accumulations that can be performed in one clock cycle. Um, so the higher the number of Macs, the more powerful the chip is. The ETHOS U55 supports four different configurations. Uh, we have 32 max, 64 max, 128 max, and 256 max. So obviously, if you're having a neural network which has, for example, a lot of operators and it's really compute intense, a, a U55, ETHOS U55 configuration with 256 max is going to deliver better performance compared to one with 32 max. And um, you know, this poses the question in, in this case, why, why have all those configurations? Why not just have you know, one configuration that is going to be ultra powerful and that is going to accelerate all, all networks? And the answer is that ultimately the choice for the number of Mach units comes down to the trade-off between power performance and area. We want to make sure and that you have uh, the power to select a configuration that is you know, best going to suit your your needs for your um, for your power um, power envelope. Um, how can you run this fixed virtual platform? Uh, you can be using what we call ARM virtual hardware. If you have attended Dev Summit conference in October, you probably are already familiar with that. But for those who uh, did not attend uh, the conference. The ARM virtual hardware is essentially a functionally accurate representation of a physical system on chip, and it is simulating software visible behavior. It runs as a simple application on the command line, which we're going to show into the in the end, and it removes any dependencies from uh, RTL or silicon availability. So this means that you can start develop your software application before actually you have access to Turio silicon. Um, and the, the ARM virtual hardware is available as a public data, pu public beta for multiple configurations of the Corestone 300 subsystem um, that is incorporating the Cortex M55 and E2CU55 micro MPU. Now, in, in the previous slide, I mentioned that the E2CU55 supports different configurations in terms of number of Mac units. It's 32 max, 64 max, 128 max, and 256 max. And uh, it's important to underline that the uh, fixed virtual platform and ARM hardware, they both support all of those uh, configurations in terms of ma number of Mac units. So you can experiment with different, um, with different configuration of the system and you can test the performance. So, um, that's all good. And the question is, how do you actually get started? What project, uh, what is it that you do in order to write an application for the E2C U55? Um, and that's why we've introduced, uh, for this purpose, we've introduced uh, the ML Embedded Evaluation Kit. The ML Embedded Evaluation Kit is a project run by ARM, which is open source. Uh, it is available under permissive Apache 2 license. And this project is available at review.mlplatform.org. And essentially it contains a number of already developed machine learning applications for the E2C U55 system. So you don't need to reinvent the hot water. You don't need to start from zero. You can take the applications that we have made and uh, you can study them, you can change them, or you can also inspire yourself from them in order to create a completely new use case. The benefits, 
that are brought by the ML Embedded Evaluation Kit are numerous. In terms of software stack, we're providing um, a number of different applications. So for example, we have an example application for the ETHOS U55 with, for a keyword spotting model, where you're feeding in an audio recording to the system. And we're using a DSCNN large, DSCNN large model, context to intake, um, that is uh, actually detecting if there is um, a keyword is detecting. This, this model has been trained to, to take 12 different keywords. Uh, all of this logic has been implemented into the ML embedded evaluation kit, and you can um, reuse it and study it and, and play with it. We also have image classification uh, example. Image classification, we are feeding in an image to the system, and we classify this image with among one of a thousand classes. Uh, for this image classification, we're using um, one of the golden standards models for image classification, mobile on edit tool. We have a visual wake word use case as well that is detecting if a person is present into an image. We have an automated speech recognition use case that is transcribing words. So if, for example, I'm saying, hello, my name is George, an automated speech, speech recognition neural network is going to write down uh, the, the, the word hello, the word my, the word name, and the word George, and you can transcribe a text. Um, so this uh, this use case is using again a WAF two letter model, and we have a we have an anomaly detection use case that is detecting anomalies into a machine based on the sound recording of this machine. All of those use cases are end to end applications, and they have been optimized in order to take full advantage of the capabilities of the micro MPU. This is not the only benefit of using the NL embedded evaluation kit. Um, the, another reason that uh, another strong argument that that can help you, um, you know, in your, in your in your evaluation process or in your application development is that the ML embedded evaluation kit provides performance evaluation uh, of your application. So this means that you can look into the number of NPU cycles that were necessary to compute inference, and you can also see the amount of memory transactions that occurred. In the case of the ETHOS U55, the memory transactions are going to be occurring uh, to and from the SRAM and to and from the flash. And also, last, last but not least, we have the inference runner capability, or more generally, the ability to, to integrate new use cases into this, into this project. Um, one of the very cool features uh, is the, what we call generic inference runner. The generic inference runner is essentially a skeleton code that allows you to feed in any model and you can obtain the performance metrics. So imagine that you have a, uh, a neural network model in-house and you're interested to know what is the performance uplift that will be delivered by the e 2 55 on your custom network. You can literally just feed in this model into the generic inference runner and within 10 minutes, you're going to know how many NPO cycles are necessary to compute inference on, on your model. So, Let's dive in a bit into the software stack. Um, app ML applications, they uh, have application common code and code that is specific for the, actual, uh, for the actual inference. Application common code is, for example, instantiating the hardware abstraction layer or the how. And this is all logic that has already been implemented to the code base. So the hardware abstraction layer is, for example, going to schedule the execution onto the Cortex-M CPU. Uh, we are using TensorFlow White for microcontrollers inference engine in order to perform inference. And the and TensorFlow White for microcontrollers is um, instantiating also the ARM ETHOS U55 driver that is going to schedule the execution onto the micro NPU. And in the end, the application, the embedded machine learning application is going to be run on a Cortex M55 or on ARM ETHOS U55. Now the the title of this presentation is how to use how to take advantage of the how to run application onto the ETHOS U55 NPU, and in this slide I'm actually telling you that you can use your you can run your application on the ETHOS U55 or on the Cortex M55. So the question is why is that? Why do we have the Cortex M55 on this picture? And um, to help me answer that I have a slide with a small animation. Um, 
imagine that you're having your model, your machine learning model. So you're having essentially a TensorFlow white file. In its uh, form, the TensorFlow white file cannot be run onto the micro MPU. You need to be using an offline optimization tool, which is going to convert all of the operators of your model into essentially a sequence of operators that are going to be understood by the micro MPU. And I'm going to I'm going to come back to the offline optimization tool into the next slides. But for now, just let's just assume that we're taking a model and we are optimizing this model into a sequence of operators that are going to be uh, performed very efficiently onto the um, onto the ETC55. This happens before you actually want to run the application. You have your model, you optimize it for the target for the hardware that you're targeting, and you're obtaining a new modified model that is going to have you know, the same accuracy, but it's, but it's optimized for the E2C55. Now, imagine that you want to actually run your application. You're going to be using the TensorFlow White from microcontrollers runtime, and this runtime is going to schedule all the different operators into one of three routes. If TensorFlow White from microcontrollers sees an operator that is optimized, that is basically capable to be executed on the micro MPU, then this operator is going to be scheduled via the E2CU55 driver to be run on the micro MPU. This is the most efficient way to actually run an operator. If, however, the operator that you're having is not supported by the E2CU55, then that's absolutely fine. And this operator can be run onto the Cortex-M55 part of the system. Um, and this is going to happen either via CMCSNN or via reference kernels. So CMCSNN uh, is essentially a software library that has been optimized for machine learning for uh, Cortex-M devices. Um, so I've been speaking about operators. Uh, some operators are supported by the micro MPU, some are not. Uh, why is that? Um, it's on, on the right hand side, you can see some of the operators that are supported by the E2CU55 hardware. Um, and um, it's worth mentioning that we're supporting all of the most common operators for embedded machine learning applications. But obviously there's new operators that are coming up constantly and some operators are just not suitable for hardware, for hardware acceleration. For example, some operators, they require too much silicon area in order to be accelerated. So, so um, it's really impossible to support every single operator. And what we do is that we support the most common ones, the most common operators, so that uh, we make sure that your network can run efficiently on the E2C55 hardware. And um, <clears throat> the last bit which I'd like to say about this slide, the last bit which I'd like to say about this slide is, um, and this is going to serve me as a transition <laughs> about the next slide, the offline optimization tool. There's new operators, new machine learning operators are emerging every day. And because we are having an offline optimization before the model is being run onto the micro MPU, this means that we are capable to be adding new operators in software. So in fact, the list of supported operators by the E2C55, the list that you see on the right-hand side, is increasing with every quarter because we are keep on adding new and new operators with, uh, as, um, as time passes by. So next, let's take a look about the offline optimization. What is this, uh, what is the green box there onto the, or what is the orange box onto the left-hand side of the slide? So this offline optimization is what we call a compiler. We name it a Vela compiler. And this is an open source project developed by ARM. Um, it is available to be downloaded from, you can, you can access the source code again from review.nlplatform.org and you can just install it on the command line with pip. And at the top level, the Vela compiler parses a model in TF Lite format. It supports the full TensorFlow White specification. Uh, it checks if the operators pass all the restrictions and schedules those operators to be run either on the NPU or on the CPU. The compiler will also allocate memory for all tensors, both for the micro NPU as well as for the Cortex-M CPU, converts the graph 
into a series of NPU commands and saves the optimized file in TFLite format. Vela has a configurable behavior, um, and I'm going to speak about this in a bit. And you can also, um, you can see different parameters of Vela again online on review.mlplatform.org. And you can see the list of supported operators by Vela from, uh, from, the, same, from the same link. So next, how, how, how do you actually work with Vela? You know, what do you, if you have a model and you want to optimize your model with Vela, what do you do? The Vela workflow is in fact really simple. All you need is a model, TensorFlow white file, and you need a configuration. This configuration is specifying the hardware that you're targeting. So if you're having, um, when you're optimizing a model, you're optimizing it for a specific hardware. You're optimizing it, for example, for a micro NP, which has 32 Mac engines, 32 Mac units, or 64 Mac units. It has different, can have different, different amount of memory available, etc. And all of these parameters need to be specified as you as you log Vela. And this is going to generate you a model, an optimized model that you can feed into the micro NPU. I'm going to come back to the configuration part in the next bit, so don't worry um, about now about it. Um, you can see on the slide a graph. You can see on the left an initial model. These are the very first few layers from a mobile on v2 model, um, model very often used for image classification. And uh, the model is optimized with Vela. I've optimized it with the command that you can see in the middle, Vela, mobile on v2, and a couple of parameters. And the Vela compiler, what it's doing is that it's converting this model into a representation understood by the micro NPU. And it's actually because this model, uh, because all of the operators of this model are supported by the micro NPU, uh, we've made sure that this mobile net v2 is a common model, and you know, we want to make sure that all the operators being used by mobile net v2 are supported. Um, this means that uh, the model can take full advantage of the capabilities of the micro NPU, and we end up with an optimized model, which essentially only has one one node. We only have an e to u node which is going to run very, very efficiently onto the micro NPU. Now, next, what is it that, what is it that we actually configure? Um, well, as I explained, uh, we're writing software application targeted at specific hardware. So the hardware that you're targeting, it can have different memory latencies or different bandwidths. You can have different configuration of the micro NPU you can have different memory mode. So for example, the memory can be shared. You can have SRAM that is shared between the M55 and U55, or you can have SRAM that is only being, or basically um, SRAM that is only being used by the U55. And the um, example configuration of how is available. Uh, so uh, there's one one example is uh, into, the, into the above link, um, into the link at review.mlplatform.org. But again, I'd like to I'd like to say that um, you know using Vela is in fact it's in fact relatively simple. You need an input model, you need a system configuration file, you invoke the Vela compiler with Vela on the command line, and you obtain an optimized model that you can then run onto the micro NPU. So next, how can you put all of that into practice? You know, how can you actually run an application? The ML Embedded Evaluation Kit provides you with a couple of ways to do that. The quick way to run it, if you want to have a default build, you can just use a Python script. It's called build default. So you can just literally type on the command line and build default. And uh, we're going to do everything for you. And we're going, to, uh, we're going to create an application. We're going to compile all of the applications for 128. For for e 2 configured uh, with 128 max with shared SRAM between the M55 and U55. The memory latencies and bandwidths have been conf configured for high-end embedded use case. Um, but it's also worth noting that um, you now the ML Embed Evaluation Kit is actually provides you a lot of flexibility. You don't have to be using a default build if you're having a different configuration or if you have a different system. What you can do is that you can actually change all of those parameters. So you can change the number of Mac units, you can change the memory latencies and bandwidths, you can change the memory mode. 
And the way to do that is to be using uh, the flow that is, uh, that is illustrated at the bottom of the slide. Um, you first need to specify what is the hardware that you're targeting with Vela. You configure the build, the build uh, system with CMake. CMake is an open source project. You compile the project, which is just, just an A command. And you run the application binary either on fixed virtual platform or on FPGA. This is the first time in this presentation that I'm actually mentioning FPGA. So why is that? You can, when you run your application onto the fixed virtual platform, you can get performance data for the E2C U55 part of the system. The Cortex M55 part of the system is functionally accurate, but uh, it's, not, um, it's not psycho accurate. So if you happen to have a model where an operator, for example, is falling back to the Cortex M CPU, you're still going to be able to, var to, ver to validate you know, if your software application is working, but you're not going to be able to evaluate the performance in terms of the number of end-to-end, uh, you know, -end, uh, number of cycles that were necessary to compute the inference. And what you can do is that you can be using an FPGA board, an MPS3 FPGA board. The bit file for this FPGA board is available free of charge on the developer.arm.com website. And this FPGA board contains, um, when you run your model on, on FPGA, you're essentially using real silicon. So you're getting obviously psycho accurate data both for the ETHOS U55 as well as for the Cortex M55 part of the system. And with that, I'd like to I'd like to pass on to the demo, and I'd like to actually show you how how we can use all of that. So uh, let me. My, I must be sharing my screen. So I'm here into the link at review.mlplatform.org. This is the uh, this is the link of the ML embedded evaluation kit, and essentially uh, this is the this is the repository that contains all of the code and the, and the documentation for how you can run models onto the E2C55 NPU. So in here, you can see actually a lot of the information that I've, uh, that I've told you is also explained in here in, in quite a lot of detail. Um, you can see, for example, the different use cases. You can see um, uh, Can you, sorry, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Um, okay. And um, I just heard my voice um, from somewhere. And um, sorry, just, just give me one second. There is something, I think my laptop is short. I'm very sorry about that. I was getting an echo from um, another computer. <laughs> Let's take a look into the, for example, keyword spotting functionality. In here, you can see documentation for all the use cases. And uh, if you open keyword spotting, for example, you can see essentially how is the keyword spotting working. So this document is describing the pre-processing that we're using. In the feature extraction, we have to calculate MSC features uh, with the window. This window is sliding to the audio recording, and you know we're moving. We have the audio window. We have to compute MFCC features in order to feed those MFCC features into the DSC and enlarge model. Then we're moving um, this window again. We're computing MFCC features onto the next set of uh, the next bit of audio, and all of this is explained in here and. Um, also, the repository obviously contains the, the source code. Um, so you can also see how we're doing that. Um, the quickest way to get started is to be using the quick start guide. And that's what I'm going to show you today. We're going to have a workshop on the 16th of November in which we're going to go into a bit more detail and we'll uh, show you, for example, how to use a custom neural network, for example, your own neural network. 
with this kit, but for now I'm just going to I'm just going to use the I'm just going to do the default build in front of you. Um, so this is the web page that explains you uh, all the steps in order to do a default build. So obviously first you have to you have to clone the repository. So I have a Linux machine here. I'm going to I'm going to clone the repository. Uh, just one second. I'm going to enter the site. Then the, the documentation asks you to pull all the external dependencies. This is just a one-time step. And uh, what it's doing is that uh, it pulls, uh, it pulls the dependencies that are external for our project. So this is, for example, we're pulling TensorFlow, we're pulling CMCSNN, we're pulling the ETOS U55 driver, etc. And this is going to take uh, a couple of seconds. We're cloning TensorFlow right now, for example. There you go. We're done. And next, well, we're good to go. We're just going to issue the build default command that I uh, was speaking about into the presentation. And this command is going to build all of the available use cases for default configuration. And the default configuration, as I was explaining, is um, composed of ETOS U55 configured for 128 max shared, shared SRAM between the M55 and U55, and memory latencies and bandwidths configured for a high-end embedded use case. This is going to take us maybe one or two minutes. This command also is going to compile, is going to fetch all of the models from the ARM public model zoo, and is going to compile the models with Vela. So uh, we're not going to, we're going to see the messages uh, coming to the terminal about the actual compilation, which is happening under the hood. If from the moment when you want to make any change, for example, if you want to, con to make a non-default build, you need to compile your model with Vela. But for default build, this is already done for us. So while this is building, Carl, do we have any questions into the chat? Uh, we do. We actually have a few questions. Um, let's see. Du, du, du. Uh, let's start with, OK, here, here's a quick one. Do you know when Ethos U55 development ports will be available to buy? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I, for example, um, I have a development board loaded with Ethos U55 that sits on my desk, but unfortunately, this is not commercially available yet. You can't just go online and purchase one of those boards as of now. But we have a number of partners that have licensed Ethos U55, and basically within one year, I, I, I can't, I don't have an exact date by which those boards are going to be on the market, but uh, within the next year for sure there's going to be um, ethos u55 hardware that will be available to, to purchase i'm sorry i can't um, provide at, more specific more specific date cool at this point who has licensed u55 that's a good question i'm not sure if we're some of those licenses are public so you can actually find out yeah about just them the just public ones uh so do you know them or do you know of them uh i mean i know a leaf uh is the biggest one and because they're the ones who actually yeah. just came out with their silicon right yes. are there any others that you know of that are public right off the top of your head they're going to be the well, first I ones know, out with hardware honest, i think you're catching me out a bit because i don't know which one is public which one is not yeah well um if you just google it you'll find out who everyone who's licensed u55 to because I've been uh, not around for a while either, so I don't remember everyone. But Alif is the biggest one, and they just went public at Dev Summit, um, and they have silicon out, so they will probably have the first boards out, just because. Yeah. Oh, and then NXP. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> Ian Brath's listening. Um, let's see. Do you have time for a few more questions right now, or so do you want to keep going? I have. Um, I can keep going actually because my demonstration, my compilation has actually finished. You can see my screen with the terminal, right? Yes. 
So we have now uh, compiled all the networks with Vela and we have configured the build system for default build. And uh, we're good to go. We're good to actually execute those networks onto the FBP. So if you just give me one second, I have to navigate to the right folder. As you know, typically when you run an application on the development board, you compile, you obtain a binary, and you load this binary onto the development board. In here, when we're using a fixed virtual platform, it is exactly the same principle. The development board is a software representation of the hardware, but what we're going to do right now is that I'm going to invoke the fixed virtual platform, and I'm just going to point this fixed virtual platform binary, um, the, the binary file that I, that I want to, to run. Now, there's just one thing which I'd like to say at this point in time, is that one of the great things also about the ML Embedded Evaluation Kit is that it allows you to evaluate the U ETHOS U55, but it also allows you to evaluate the ETHOS U65. And the Corestone, the publicly available Corestone 300 F uh, FVP contains uh, both the U55, the contains both a system that contains ETHOS U55 and also a system which contains um, ETHOS U65, different. It's going to be a different binary. Uh, and everything of what I've described about the software stack is going to be valid about the ETHOS U65. These are, you know, these are different products. They have different number of Macs that are available. They have different memory modes. They have basically different end goal. Um, but uh, with this ML embedded evaluation kit, uh, know that you can also use it to evaluate the ETHOS U65. So, in this case, we're speaking about the ETHOS U55, so I'm just going to be using the ETHOS U55 part of the FBP, and I'm going to show, for example, the keyword spotting application. So I, I press enter, and uh, there we go. This is our development board. And you can see that it does look like a real development board because you can still have, you still have the switches, you're still having the LEDs. And uh, it has an LCD screen, for example. Here you can see the LCD screen. And we're having the menu which allows us to interact with the application. So I just want to see also kind of the uh, comment a bit on the input that is being, or the output that is being shown by the FVP. You can see, for example, that uh, we only have a single operator. And this is, this is because uh, we're running a neural network where all of the operators are supported by the ETHOS U55. So we only have one optimized operator, one ETHOS U operator. So let's, let's run inference. So I'm going to press one and uh, this is going to classify an audio clip. So we're taking an audio clip that is called down.wav. And essentially, we want to, we're doing the keyword spotting application. So we want to spot a keyword. And what we do here, what we see here is that it took us one inference uh, to do this computation. And we see that we spotted the world down with essentially 99% probability. Um, that's very high. It means that, uh, you know, that's how we can actually verify that our, um, our application is running correctly. And then for the performance bit, we're running a network where all the operators are supported by the E2C55. Therefore, uh, those numbers are actually, uh, you know, they can represent real system, how a real system is going to behave. And we can see the first uh, three sets of numbers that I'm going to highlight here are about the number of memory transactions, the number of bits. For the ETHOS U55, one bit is up to 64 bits. And essentially, this information provides you information about how much memory transfer occurred to and from the SRAM for the X0 in this memory configuration, and uh, how, many, how, much transferred, how much data was read also from the flash for the IXC1 bus. And also, perhaps, uh, you know, one of the really important bits of information is the number of NPU cycles. So we know that for this network, the SCNN 
uh, clustered wires network contest in Tate, we need just a bit over 600,000 uh, cycles in order to compute in France. And with that, I'm going to go back to the presentation. Oh dear, I went to the very first slide. And I'm going to ask you, Carl, again to help me with the question and answers. Oh no, one second. I'm sorry, I forgot I had <laughs> um, I forget that I had a summary slide. Um, so what did we see? Um, I showed you what is the ARM ETHOS U55 micro NPU. I explained you what is the software stack to use in order to, to create an application for the ETHOS U55 um, with TensorFlow White for microcontrollers. I explained you how you can optimize a neural network model for the ETHOS U55 micro NPU with the VELA compiler. And we also had a quick look into some of the operators and we explained that uh, we, we support the most common operators, but at the same time, not every single operator is being supported. And I show you how you can run an application onto the ETHOS U55. So my ask of you, please download the source code today, try running an application yourself, try running what I've just shown you with the build default script. If you have a custom neural network in-house that you're interested to know the performance of, Try running it on the ETHOS U55 and tell us how you're getting on. Also worth noting that you can access the ARM virtual hardware. Uh, by going on to the ARM.com website, you can get access to uh, 100 hours of free AWS EC2 CPU credits for the first 1,000 qualified users. And also we are going to have a workshop about the ML Embedded Evaluation Kit where we're going to go into a bit more detail uh, of how, for example, you can run a, a neural network. So make sure you sign up for that one as well. And with that, Carol, now we're into the Q&A. Uh, awesome, awesome. Thank you, George. That was a great presentation. Um, let's see, we have a few questions around FVPs. Yeah. Um, ooh, and, and some of the questions are, answering themselves. Thank you everyone for like doing some digging and getting into those. Anyway, um, let's see, Han asked how as accurate is the FVP cycle count? Um, and then also when you say runs exactly like, does that include modeling of cache and processor pipeline for the FVP? Yeah. So tell us so, a little bit more about FVP is, yeah. FVP, why are you using it? How accurate is it? Yeah, so the whole point of having a fixed virtual platform is to be able to develop software applications before having access to the real silicon. So the FVP under the hood is having a, a model that behaves exactly like real hardware. And uh, it is, we're saying that the FVP cycle approximate. So it is, it has up to, we have up to 10% accuracy, up, uh, or should I say up to 90% accuracy. Uh, in terms of uh, proximity between the numbers reported by the FVP and what would the real numbers would look like if they were if the same workload was run on, on real silicon, so that's that's really astonishing. Uh, it means that we're getting data that is you know very very close to what would the real hardware uh, provide us. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, let's see. Um, uh, how about talk about Max for a little bit? We had a few questions around in, in there around Max. So like what data types are available? Are those Max operating on N32 or float or whatever? Um, yes, that's a very good question. Is the number of Max fixed for a given hardware implementation? Yes, yes, that's really important um, to underline that in order to be using actually the micro NPU, you need to quantize your model essentially to int eight, uh, ideally. Uh, the ETHOS U55 supports also int, int, int eight and int 16 activations and the weights need to be, uh, to be int eight. Um, and what was the second question about the number of marks? Uh, yeah, what it's the number of marks fixed. Is, yeah, is it fixed for, for a, given, a given hardware implementation? So, if I understand.
understand the question correctly, um, yes, the number of max, max is fixed. And what happens is that um, you have a silicon and this silicon is actually going to have already predetermined number of Mach units, if you will. So that's why it's really important to know how to optimize your model with Vera for the correct um, for the correct number of max that you're actually going to use into the real application. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, these slides will be available with the YouTube link um, whenever that's posted online. See it on developer. Um, let's see. What other questions do we have? Um, the the ethos micro MP driver source will be provided so people can use it as bare metal, right? Without needing and like free RTOS or anything, correct? To your knowledge, um, yeah. So right now, those applications are actually bare metal, but uh, nothing prevents you from using a real time operating system like free RTOS. Yeah, we. You've done a little bit with free RTOS on U55, right? Most of it, most yeah. of the time you're doing bare metal though, aren't you? Yeah, uh, but we can, um, you know, if people would like to have applications available with free RTOS, I'm sure that we can uh, make this happen and uh, <laughs> basically allow people to take advantage of a free time operating system as well. Uh, here's a good question. Another question from Han. Uh, what are the tools we need to license to develop software in U55 or M55? Yeah, so in fact, uh, everything which I've shown you is open source. So we don't need to license anything at all. If you want to develop on, for, the, for the, if you want to, um, you know, create a software application for the E2C55 and test it on the fixed virtual platform, the cost is literally zero. You don't need anything. The only thing that you need is a computer with internet connection where and in the browser essentially. The code samples from the MMM beta evaluation kit uh, are provide, provided for free. This is an open source project. The Vela compiler is also open source project. So um, yeah, that it's literally the entry cost is equal to zero. Yeah, it's you can get started right now. It's, it's yeah. great. Um, we're, we're all really excited about that. Um, Hannah asked, how, how about a tool for debugging? Um, right now, it would just be using the eval kit, right, George? Yeah. So, sorry, what is the question about debugging? How about debugging any tool for debugging specifically for U55? Uh, you can be using the standard debugging tools for when you're developing bare metal application called the, I mean, debugging for debugging the software applications from the MLM embedded evaluation kit is no different from debugging, you know, a different embedded application. You can still have breakpoints and you can still be single stepping through the code. This is, yeah, Depen depending on the ID that you're using. Let's see, does Ethos U55 support mixed precision for the single, for single model, for example, int 16 and int 8 for the layers of a neural network? Do you know that one? I'm not sure. Precision. I think normally I've only seen single. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure on this one. We're gonna have to check that one out. That's a good question though. Um uh let's see. This one, let's see. Cort is Cortex M55 the only chip with U U ethos U55, or will there be plans to support families like Cortex A, for example? So that one's yeah, a little bit a, George, do you want to go question. into the differences between yes. M55 and U55? Uh, I, I can do that, but uh, that's yeah. a great question because um everything which I've been speaking about is primarily about the ethos U55 combined with Cortex M55. This doesn't mean that this is the only combination in which we can use the ETHOS U55. The ETHOS U55 can also be used alongside other uh, Cortex M devices. And uh, it's just that the reference package, the Corson 300 reference package is providing this uh, this functionality out of the box, but nothing prevents you from, yeah, from, from using different, different Cortex M alongside the ETHOS U55. 
and you can see the different the list of available um, Cortex M devices also on the ARM website onto the product brief of the E255 page. Um, do we have any other questions before we run out of time? We're in the last five minutes. Uh, that's a good question. Is U55 a coprocessor or separate instruction stream? That's a good question, yeah. Um, so the U55 is, it, it essentially, it is a piece of logic that is extremely good, that has been designed to process neural network. So in this sense, it's actually slightly different from a normal uh, microcontroller, for example. On a normal microcontroller, you can be reading sensor data, you can run the neural network as well. Whereas on the U it was U55, you can, what you can do is uh, run inference on your machine learning model extremely fast. Yeah. Um, here's a question. I don't know anything about it, but is NPU actually a systolic array execution unit? I'm afraid that uh, yeah. we'll have you can see the details online about like the actual structure of the NPU and how it, how it works. Um, how is security figured into this product is another good question. Yeah, I have to say that I'm not an expert on security, so I'm not going to be able to kind of comment a lot on that. Uh, but you can still take advantage of, you know, standard security features that we are developing in ARM, such as, for example, um, Trust Zone. Um, yeah. Any other questions for George? We are almost out of time. Um, if not, I, I think that's it. Uh, thanks everyone for attending. Um, George, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, I'm, I, I like seeing it in action every time. Uh, everyone make sure to okay. register for our next Tech Talk. And this content will all be posted online after the fact. You can watch it on YouTube and see all the slides and make sure to check out the eval kit right now. Um, you can also okay. check out ARM virtual hardware. Yes, please go and try what I've just shown you by yourself. Thank you very much. Yeah, awesome. Anything else you'd like to add at the end, George? No, not really. Really enjoyed doing this tech talk. I'm very happy to do another one. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thanks for presenting. That's All right. right. Thank uh, you very much, thanks, Carl. everyone. Bye bye.